December is a rare kind of month in the night sky. A moment when people across the globe, north and south, can look up and see the same constellation rising. Orion. And every December something else happens. New telescopes are unwrapped everywhere. And many of them end up pointed at the same place in Orion, where countless beginners find their first deep sky target. My name is Tim and you're watching Cosmic Captures. In this video, we are going to explore what the night sky has to offer this month. So whether you're just starting out with a smart telescope or you've been imaging for years, December has something for everyone. Let's take a quick look at what the Moon is doing this month. Because it sets the rhythm for everything we can capture. We start with the full Moon on the 5th of December, known as the Cold Moon. Then on December 11th, we will reach the last quarter. The new Moon arrives on the 20th of December, bringing the darkest skies of the month. And finally, the first quarter comes on December the 27th. If you want to plan your sessions around Moonlight, you can download the Moonlight Astrophotography Planner, the map, over at CosmicCaptures.com. And while the Moon shapes part of the month, there's another moment in December that influences the sky for all of us. December also brings us the December solstice, the moment when one half of the world experiences its longest day and the other half its longest night. It's a reminder that wherever you are on Earth, the sky follows a rhythm we all share. December is a great month for nightscape photography, because Orion dominates the sky. And it's one of the easiest constellations to recognize, no matter where you live. What makes Orion so exciting is how differently you can frame it depending on your lens. A 24mm shot captures Orion surrounded by nearby constellations. Move to 35 or 50 millimeters, and you isolate the whole shape, the belt, the sword and the bright stars that anchor the constellation. And at 135 millimeters, you can start focusing on individual regions like the Orion Nebula or the Horsehead region. It's one of the most diverse constellations in the sky. Bright, structured and full of detail at every scale. And if you're heading out for nightscapes this month, there's something else you definitely don't want to miss. And that brings us to one of December's biggest highlights, the Gemini meteor shower. The Geminids peak on December the 13th to 14th, often producing dozens of bright meteors every hour. Most meteor showers come from comets, but the Geminids come from a rocky asteroid called 3200 Phaeton. It behaves like a strange rock comet that sheds tiny grains which burn up in our atmosphere and create those colorful streaks. This year's conditions are favorable. The Moon is a thin, veining crescent rising in the early morning hours, which leaves most of the night wonderfully dark. The best viewing is from around 10 p.m. into the early morning hours, as the radiant in Gemini climbs higher. Meteor showers are magical to watch, but there's even more magic hidden in the deep, bright regions inside Orion. Our first deep sky target sits in the heart of Orion, and it's one of the most welcoming objects in the night sky. The Orion Nebula, or M42. Inside this glowing cloud, new stars are forming, it's what astronomers call a stellar nursery, a mix of warm gas, drifting dust and young energetic stars shaping the nebula from inside out. Even with short exposures, the bright core starts to reveal its structure surprisingly easily. M42 is one of the easiest deep sky objects you can try in December. DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, small refractors and smart telescopes all pick it up well. 
which is why so many people photograph it as their very first target. Just be a little bit careful with exposure times, because the core is so bright that it can overexpose easily. Aside from that, M42 has something to show at every scale. Wide shots that include the surrounding dust and the Running Man Nebula or deeper views that reveal delicate details in its core. But now, we move from the heart of the Orion Nebula into a neighboring region that holds one of the most iconic and recognizable shapes in the entire night sky. Our next stop in Orion takes us to one of the most recognizable fields in the entire night sky, the region around the Horsehead Nebula. It's a beautiful mix of glowing gas, dark dust shaped by the bright stars along Orion's belt. The deep red glow you see in images comes from hydrogen gas, and rising out of it is the dark silhouette of the Horsehead, first identified in 1888 by Wilhelmina Fleming one of the pioneering women who helped shape modern astrophysics. This region responds well to a wide range of setups. It's also a rewarding target for smart telescopes because the contrast of the dark dust and the bright background shows up surprisingly well even in shorter sessions. If you had only one night here, I would choose simple broadband imaging. There isn't much blue oxygen emission in this area and broadband preserves the subtle reflection tones around the main structures. It's a field that combines everything people love about Orion. We have color, we have structure, we have contrast and a shape that you can recognize instantly, even if you're brand new to astrophotography. And from this bold high contrast field, we shift to something much softer, a quiet blue glow tucked deeper into Orion's dust clouds. Our next target is M78, a quiet and beautiful reflection nebula in the dusty regions of Orion. Unlike the bright reds of the Horsehead or the intense glow of M42, M78 shines by scattering the light of the young stars inside it. That's why it has this soft, cool blue appearance that give it an almost ghost-like personality. It's also more accessible than people think, and smart telescopes can capture the main glow surprisingly well under dark skies. Broadband imaging is ideal here, since it preserves the natural blue tones reflection nebulae are known for. With M42, the Horsehead and M78, we've explored three very different regions and all of them work surprisingly well with smart telescopes. And if you've been watching these videos for a while, you will know I've been adding smart telescope friendly targets whenever they make sense. But now I'd love to hear from you. Would you like to see more smart telescope focused tips and what would help you to get most out of your setup? All right. Let's keep exploring Orion. As we move past M78, the dust around it begins to take on a much darker, almost eerie shape. This is the Boogeyman Nebula, a faint shadowy figure outlined by soft starlight in one of the more atmospheric regions tucked into Orion's dust clouds. Its twisted profile really does look like a dark silhouette reaching through the surrounding material. This is a much fainter region than M78, but it's a rewarding challenge if you enjoy capturing subtle detail. Broadband imaging works well, especially for those dark nebula tones. There's actually a lot of hydrogen gas here glowing in deep red H-alpha light and adding a bit of narrowband data can make the scene feel more dramatic and layered. Smart telescopes can pick up the main structure under darker skies, but this is a target that really benefits from longer sessions and patience. What makes this area even more fascinating is its place in the bigger picture. 
the boogeyman and M78 sit on opposite sides of a massive sweeping arc that surrounds much of Orion. And when you zoom out, that arc finally comes into view. Barnard's Loop is one of the largest and most beautiful structures in the winter sky. You can photograph it with a regular DSLR or mirrorless camera, but it usually takes darker skies and longer exposures to come through clearly. If you are using an astro-modified camera, one that is more sensitive to deep red H-alpha light, the loop often appears much more quickly and with stronger color. For wide-angle photography, this is one of the most rewarding winter targets you can frame. A perfect way to show Orion not as an individual object, but as one connected glowing structure. And if you swing your view towards the bright star Rigel, the colors of Orion shift again, from deep red to something much colder and ghostly. The Witchet Nebula is the largest reflection nebula in the entire night sky. It technically lies just outside Orion, in the constellation Eridanus. But it's so close to Rigel that it practically feels like part of the family. Its pale ghost-like glow comes from starlight scattering of very fine dust grains. And in longer exposures it really looks like a drifting profile turning towards Orion. The whole area is one of my favorite regions to photograph. And with a telescope around 250 mm and an APS-C size sensor, you can capture the entire nebula in a single frame. And you can photograph it beautifully with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera in the medium telephoto lens, especially on the dark skies. Just watch out for Rigel. Its intense light can create reflections or streaks in your images, depending on your optics. For smart telescopes, this nebula is challenging. It's large, faint and needs long sessions under dark skies. But with enough patience, who knows what's possible. Do you prefer the larger objects like the Widget Nebula or the smaller, more detailed regions in Orion? Or perhaps you're into the faint, lesser known stuff? Then the next nebula might be just your thing. To get to the next target, we follow the curve of Barnard's Loop to the north, and here we reach something much larger but less easy to notice. SH2264, also known as the Lambda Orionis Nebula, is a huge cloud of glowing hydrogen gas surrounding the star Mesa at the top of Orion. It's a massive structure, but 85 to 135 mm lenses or a very short focal length telescope can reveal its soft sweeping shape best. The glow is faint, but beautifully smooth, like a gentle halo framing the northern part of the constellation. Before I tell you where you can find all the details about the targets in this video, I want to share a little update. A Cosmic Captures Patreon page is coming later this month. It's not 100% ready yet, but I'll share it soon for anyone who wants to support the work I'm doing here. But now back to the targets. All of these just show how rich the Orion region really is. And if you want to have framing tips, filter recommendations or information about smart telescope suitability, you will find everything on my website CosmicCaptures.com. With so many different regions in Orion, what's the one target you are most excited to capture on your next clear night? Or maybe you feel like exploring something outside of Orion? If so, last month's video still has many targets in perfect position. Whatever direction you choose, I hope you get the chance to go out there and see for yourself. And for that, I wish you clear skies.